We're here outside the Royal Court of Justice in London for Jason Moore. I have never come across a situation like this in my life. Talk about corruption. The brother of the deceased is campaigning for the guy convicted of the murder to be released. Have you ever heard of that in your life? What is wrong with the system? There is no physical evidence against Jason Moore. Not a shred. What they've done here is court is theatre. They put on the best show. Innocent guy gets sent to prison for life. It's absolutely disgusting. And Kirsty here is leading the campaign. What do you say about this? I say you're bang on. That's what I say. Absolutely. I mean, when I came out of the uh, Old Bailey, I remember being stopped on the steps and a guy, a random guy, said to me, best actor won. That's what he said. And after that, I was just in shock. And um, yeah, and here we are today. And we're still going and um, it's not easy. It's not easy and it can happen to anybody. You sitting indoors watching thinks this can't happen to you. I'm telling you it can. And if we don't raise awareness to this now, it will keep on happening. And that's the situation, not only am I in, but you're in that situation as well. So How much did they give him to defend himself? Say again? How much did they give him to defend himself? How did he get a lawyer? Well, legal aid. Legal aid. Legal, legal aid. aid. There you go. There you go. Oh, and by the way, if we want to talk about legal aid, let me just tell you something. You pay for what you get. You pay for what you get. Which is jack shit. And so. most innocent people in prison is down to bad representation. They put you on legal aid, which is like getting a public pretender in America. Murder case. This is a huge career opportunity for everyone involved. Detectives, prosecutors, judges aspiring for political office, you name it. And they spend hundreds of thousands, if not millions, showing that an innocent man is guilty. And they put him on legal aid. How does he stand a chance when court is theatre? And whoever puts on the best theatre show wins. They pay tens of thousands of expert witnesses, psychologists, corrupt cops get up there. Who's the public, the jury going to believe? A cop who's upholding law? to be trusted, or this person who's accused of heinous crimes. They show gory images of the person who's been murdered to trigger an emotional reaction. Without a shred of evidence, no DNA, let's, this guy was not there. But let's not forget. Where was he? Sitting in the car. He wasn't there, he was in the car. But let's not forget, it all comes back to one place with a trial, with a defense, with building a defense. And that comes through something that they call disclosure. Disclosure to you might just be a bit of a word, disclosure, but it's more than that because it's photographs, it's forensic evidence, it's CCTV, it's witness statements, it's everything that can say you are innocent. But, and it's a big but, because if the police do not hand over that disclosure, how the hell are you gonna win your case? So like Sean says, it's kind of like you, they pick and they choose what they want to give you because at the same time you're building your defence, they're building their defence and all they want is a body. So they don't care how they do it, they just do it because at the end of the day, you are a body, you're nothing else. That's all you are. And that is all Jason was. Jason was just a body that they used to get a conviction. They got their conviction and here we are now nine years, just over nine years into a life sentence. And we're exhausting every opportunity that we have to, to make this wrong right. We only get so much evidence, fresh evidence. Every time we put it in, we can't use it again. We have to go find more. So at some point it's gonna run out. If we don't win and right this wrong, he is in there for the rest of his life. And I think that's the point that people really need to understand. It's not, it's not, it's not a end, never-ending story. It will end at some point, so. To let him out, guess what? The detectives who told the family members, victims, we've got the right guy, they look like shit. So they're embarrassed and their careers unwind. The prosecutors, all the corrupt parasites in the legal system who nailed this guy who was innocent and knew it probably, but just tweaked the evidence, all their careers unwind. So they maintain that he's guilty even in the face of all this new evidence coming out. And there has been new evidence come out, hasn't there, Kirsty? Absolutely. I mean, we had new evidence um, in 2017. In fact, we had 
the victim's family came to the Court of Appeal. We had another, I think it was six people coming to the Court of Appeal. All people that didn't know each other, all people that were saying exactly the same thing and they just got a red pen and put it through it. Here we are, years later, we go back to the CCRC, they made a mistake, we're paying for that mistake, so we've got to go to the CCRC again. Now this time, we're, uh, we've run out of evidence, this is our last crack at it. Um, if this fresh evidence doesn't do it, then Jason's gone. And we're talking about medical evidence, we're talking about witness, a witness who's now told a third party um, media outlet that actually on the very morning that he viewed that incident, he was drunk. But more than that, he has said, which is very important, he has said, I could have been mistaken. Now we've offered that evidence to the CPS, the MPS, the CCRC, and they haven't batted an eyelid. They've just sent us back to the end of the CCRC queue, which is just over a year. So Jason's got to wait another year for his application to get back in front of someone to have a look at. And uh, every charity from uh, Inside Justice, Appeal, um, The Justice Gap, all these other guys are out here uh, campaigning for disclosure and so on. They've been at it for years. So if they couldn't do it, um, what's happening? <laughs> To know, does that mean that we're not going to do it? Which is why public support is paramount, Sean. Yeah, my name is John Maltlock. I'm a, like, a good friend of Tim Darby, whose brother Robert was, the mur was, was murdered, yeah. We know he's innocent, and I think at the end of the day, this second appeal and the new evidence, the new evidence should have been available at the original court case, and then Jason won't be in prison. So, you know, the evidence that, uh, I, I, I just think, I find it shocking that you have to go through this process because it's it's a serious mountain to climb and you're not really going to get there but you've got to try. Well my name is Lady Smeltzer Cole and I am here in support of Kirsty Moore and her family with regards to giving support on free Jason Moore. Do you feel like there's been a lot of corruption? Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, I've even read some of the evidence that Kirsty provided me with quite a few weeks ago now. And it's been quite shocking and disgusting of some of the facts that I've actually read in the documentation. Do you know what? I think there's a massive amount of corruption in this case. You know, uh, you know even the family say that uh, they believe that he never killed him. Um, they know who killed him. Um, um, from what we've been told and what we've uh, ascertained over the last few months is that the person that killed him is a police informer. Um, and like the case of, of Kevin Lane, uh, another example of, of mis miscarriage of justice, uh, another police informer has, has got off it uh, simply because of his links with, uh, with the police. And the fella that he went up against is very similar in height. And Jason's like six foot seven, six foot eight. I'm not even sure how tall he is. And the evidence that, that what I've been told, how he was grilled about this blue jacket, that why wasn't he ever told to put it on? Because it would never fit him. He's a big, big man. And the, the fella that is, is guilty is a big fella, but he's nowhere near as tall as Jason. It seems um, the judiciary in this country, country are, are, are just impervious to the fact that they, they, they can never ever say they made a mistake. You know, and, uh, and I think this is a perfect example of, of Jason family know who killed him, we know who killed him, the police know who killed him, but still, that justice will not be served for at least another 24 years when they turn around and say, we made a mistake. But then it's going to be too late. But this is what they do in this country. Um, they apologise 20, 24 years later when everyone's either forgot about it or they're dead. I'm not saying he's not there, but he's not guilty at all. And it's the complete wrong man, and, and the evidence proves that. And I'm, I'm just confused why the evidence wasn't used. You've had to go all through these hoops and keep jumping through, you know, they put something else there, you've got to do this, you've got to do this, you've got to do... But what Kirsty was telling me, the second appeal really is the last, last result, and it's got to be good. No one cares, you know, the judiciary doesn't care, the police doesn't care, and normal Joe Pardee doesn't care, because it's, as soon as someone gets sentenced, everyone washes their hands of them. So, you know, it's really important that everyone comes together, comes to the law courts and supports Jason uh, and does something on the social media, 
contacts their local MPs and really read about the case. You know, we've got the family in question of, of the victim, you know, of turn around and say, we know that this is an unsafe conviction. This is, an, this is, this is a, a, a farce. We know he didn't kill him. You can't get any more concrete evidence than that. And they know the person that killed him. You know, surely there's, there's someone somewhere has got to see, see sense. I oh, know they do, because at the end of the day, they're grieving, like, cursed is grieving, you know, they're, they're going through a process of knowing the wrong man's in prison for, for murdering Tim's brother. It's, it's just, it's hard to put into words, really, because it's just so wrong. And if something's that wrong, surely someone has to be held accountable for that. There's consequences to their decisions, and here we are 19 years later, it's, all, it's exhausting. But it never goes away, does it? And I think the longer it goes on, possibly the worse it gets. What needs to be done? Well, justice needs to get back in court with the evidence that's available, and then justice will prevail. I think so, yeah. We will continue this fight. We won't, we won't stop. All the links will be in the description box if you want to support this campaign. Now, I've written down 10 methods corrupt detectives, prosecutors, the system, how they frame innocent people. And I'm going to just bounce these 10 off Kirsty, and we're going to see if they flag up. First one, when there's no evidence, they trigger emotional reactions from the jury by showing the heinous pictures of the crime. 100%. In fact, what happened in this case is at one point, Jason's co-defendant, he got up and he said, judge, judge, he's threatening me. But nobody else heard that. Nobody else heard that. And the judge stopped the trial and he put a guard in between them. And still to this day, we, it was all an act. Yep. It was all Fingers making first. the jury think that Jason was the aggressor. And in fact, it was the other way around. Right, tick that one. Number two, conceal other suspects. 100%, we have two. We have a girl called Abby McCann, who would have come to court and said that Jason wasn't wearing a blue jacket. The police told her at her front door, we will provide you with an armed guard for the day. She said to me, when I heard that, I wasn't coming to court. And then again, there was another incident exactly the same as that. Number two tick, number Is three. Is that ticked? Yep, coerce false confessions. Right, that's a tricky one. That is our chief prosecution witness. He was Somalian, he didn't speak English. He's in a police station and the police are saying to him in his witness interview, Mr. Ahmed, we don't want you to guess. Chief prosecution witness. Is that a tick? That's a tick. Let number four, when there's no evidence, plant evidence. Okay, so when there's no evidence, plant evidence. Finger chip. You know, her, well, her, 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 yeah, her, her, yeah, her, yeah, I mean, what about the police didn't look at the crime scene? Is that a good one? Yes. In this case, the crime was over there and the police were over there. I think that's a good one. There's no evidence. Don't look for evidence. Exactly. Tick, tick. Loss of forensic, <laughs> loss of DNA. Everything that could exonerate Jason was over there and they put a tent up over there. There you go. Number five, pay or reward expert witnesses to lie. Okay, tricky one. Psychiatrists, um, yeah. you know, people who'll get up and say there's a chance that he did it because I'm an expert, things like that. Well, dear Mr. Policeman, I was drunk. Not disclosed. All right, strategy number six, ensure that the public defender or in the, in the UK, this will be legal aid, work for the prosecution? Yeah, 100%. Jason made um, quite a few complaints, actually, at the trial, in all seriousness. And the complaint that he was actually making was that every morning when he turned up for trial, his co-defendant's counsel was sitting at a table with the police. And Jason kept complaining about it, and he got a real sense that they were working together. So, yeah, I'd have to say that one. Number seven neutralize or discredit honest witnesses? 
Yeah, absolutely. Court of Appeal, um, like I said, had all those witnesses coming, none of them of which knew each other, came there for one purpose, to say, listen, you've made a mistake. They gave their rhyme and reason. They were all the same, same version, really. And again, they'd never met each other. So, I mean, you can't have eight people coming to court that, you know. Number eight. Pro I hear them over there. Yeah. Number eight, procure dishonest witnesses. Yeah, I mean, I mean, here's a question. Why, why will the CPS, the MPS and the CCRC not re-interview that, that, um, that chief prosecution witness? I, I don't understand it. I mean, it can only lead to one thing. It's a question mark. It can only lead to one thing, that they know that there's something wrong there. The I mean, yeah, want. the thing that they don't want you to know. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Hire sociopathic prosecutors. Yeah, I don't know about that one, Sean. <laughs> Rig the jury. Dupe the jury. Dupe the jury. Let's dupe the jury. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, our fresh evidence now had the jury of nine. I mean, it's common sense. I mean, every, every person I talk to, whether it's Sean or, or someone else in the media, when I come out with these things, I remember a conversation we had, didn't we, Sean? And you were just like, you what? And yeah, when you're talking the common sense, I mean, and you're portraying someone to a jury, but the police are withholding the disclosure. So, I mean, here's a good instance for you. They put a man as a witness of truth in front of a jury. And they said he was a witness of truth and the jury had faith in that. But what they didn't know is that at the crime scene, this particular guy had hit a knife, contaminated the crime scene, moved the crime scene, moved the body, you know, and all the rest of it. So I'm sure that if I was sitting there on the jury and I just heard all that, I don't think I'd put all my faith in him as a witness. And again, the chief prosecution witness that was drunk, had I, if the jury had known he was drunk, would they have took everything he said in the merit that they took it? So yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. Firstly, people around the world are watching this right now. And where can they support this campaign? We'll put a link below it on the YouTube yeah. version. Where can they find you online? If they go on Google, what have they got to look for? Okay, so freejasonmore.com. Yeah. Uh, my email is um, freejasonmore at gmail.com. Um, Twitter, fr hashtag freejasonmore. Um, same with the Facebook, um, LinkedIn, all the usual ones. We're all there. Come and join us. Get involved in this campaign because the difference between now and the people that have gone before us is social media. For the first time, really, in, well, I'm sure it's not the first time, but for the first time, what we can really do is we, the public, can talk about this with no restraint. Every time you go to a newspaper, it has to go through a legal system before it will get printed. People like Sean, you're so important because we can talk to Sean and we can tell the truth about what is going on. But more than that, we get to choose who we share it to. And I think as a member of the public, and I think we'd all agree, that we have a right to know what it is that's going on. And I think get involved in this campaign, help us push it further, help us get, this, um, get it wider. It's already around the world already. And yeah, if we can be, all come together, bigger in numbers is better for everybody. And we can shine a light on these corrupt prosecutors, corrupt detectives, parasites yeah, in the legal news. system who think this can all be contained, but it cannot be contained in this day and age of social media. And is, 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 you, is there a petition? In the last months, police corruption is everywhere. Oh yeah, it's corruption. It's course. everywhere, corruption everywhere. Yeah. So if you are sitting indoors thinking this can't happen and this is the British justice system and it doesn't happen, just switch the news on. It's all there in front of you. Which police jurisdiction was this? Metropolitan Police. London Met. London Met. Oh, we've heard a lot about them from John Wedger. Uh, we'll have to talk to him and um, Matthew Steeples about this. Yeah. Um, what is there a pe petition or anything? Yeah, there's a petition. Change.org, hashtag free Jason Moore. Please sign the petition. It's got off to a bit of a rough start. I think that's my fault. Um, I'm new to this, just a member of the public. Didn't know anything about computers. Haven't got a clue how it all works. I'm getting a bit of a better grasp now, thanks to help from people like Sean. But yeah, if you can sign my petition, I'll be extremely grateful. But let's just be clear. Even the petition, 100,000 signatures. Where the hell do you get 100,000 signatures? It's another example how the justice system, the system is designed for you to fail. Now, I was talking to someone the other day 
someone else that has been in prison and we, we, we figured it out. The justice system is designed for you to fail in four years. After four years, everybody gives up and goes home. Well, we're here nine and a half years later and we're still going. So, you know, we're not going anywhere. Get on board this campaign. Extremely grateful if you can and thanks for Can people email complaints to the London map, please? Absolutely. Contact the lot. Go to your local papers, get involved, read the stories. I've put all the information out there, Newsquest, Ilford Recorder, Romford Recorder, all the local East End papers, the Mirror, the Times were here today, the Sun, everybody, it's your right to know what is going on. So if you think like we all do, that this is a miscarriage of justice, please join this campaign. Thank you. I really well, appreciate it. And free Jason Moore! Free Jason Moore! <laughs> Free Jason Moore! Free Jason Moore!